Welcome, welcome, welcome to Learning Reaper. I am your host, X.E.L.O. And we already know what's out. Reaper 7. It's here. So I'm going to go over some of the things that I really like about Reaper 7 that I kind of found out during this uh, little escapade that I've had. Uh, if you did see the live, you saw I having a lot of trouble and struggling kind of getting things together. I want to give huge shout outs to people like Reaper Blog for putting out little posts, Mike from Let's Talk About Reaper, and Reaper Tips for actually giving out really great tips about the Reaper 7 theme that's currently out there. I know Kenny will probably come with some real banging videos, but I just wanted to kind of give my input and show you guys what I found. Let's go. All right, before we get started, I want to address the licensing thing. I've seen a lot of people asking about the licensing. So if you purchased Reaper and you had 5.0 through 5.9, if you purchased it anytime in between there, you will be asked to renew your license. Uh, seeing if you bought it from 6.0 to 6.99, you won't have to renew your license until Reaper 8 comes out. I hope that addresses that issue because I've seen a lot of people asking about it and that's pretty much the way it is. If you had five point whatever and you purchased it then, you're gonna have to renew for seven. So that's kind of how it went. But let's get back to the video. All right, so here we are in Reaper and this theme is the Reaper Tips theme. Um, I still enjoy this theme a little bit more than any of the other ones. Uh, even a default one, I'm not that big of a fan of it, but it's there. So um, you can use it if you like, but I'm just going to use the Reaper Tips theme. Uh, the first thing I kind of want to talk about is the options for like a visual spacer. So I'm just going to add a couple of tracks on here just so you guys can kind of see. So, all right. So let's say this one right here, we wanted to add a spacer on this one. So you can right click on it and it gives you an option that says visual spacer. That's the first option you have on the list once you right click on it. Uh, then you can go to either insert a space before tracks, insert a space after tracks, or you have one that says before and after tracks, right? So if I click on this one, it's going to put one at the top and it's going to put one at the bottom, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can't move the bottom one. I don't know why. Uh, but this bottom one, you can't move down. Uh, but the top one, you can move up to like different places uh, on the tracks. You just can't move down. I'm not sure if that was by choice, uh, but currently I'm not able to move it past the track that has it at the bottom, which is pretty cool still. But um, I'm not sure if they're going to update that or fix that in the future. So I'm going to right click on it, this little spacer, and it gives you an option that says remove spacer. So it's just that easy to add and remove spacers inside of Reaper. All right. And the next thing I want to talk about is the gain reduction meter. It's pretty easy to kind of set it up. I'm just going to pull a sample in. All right. What I want to do is I want to lock this to a key. So let's do, let's do E. I'm going to lock anything I play into an E note. Right, and if you want to learn how to actually use this, I have a video showing you how to use this. It's called MX Tuner and uh, you can actually use it that way. So I'm going to grab this and drag it in. All right. And it looks like it's a four bar loop, which is pretty cool. So um, if I play it, you'll see this, the regular meters here. So if I wanted to actually have the gain reduction meter, I will have to have something that actually does the gain reduction on the track. Uh, let's set it up first. So what you want to do is right click on the meters and it gives you a whole bunch of different options for your meters. So you can do a, all these different things in here for your meters itself. But you want to go right down here to where it says meters. Uh, and once you're in meters, you want to go down here to where it says display gain reduction or plugins that support it. So now if I go and add, let's say a limiter. And now if I play it, as you can see the reduction on there, right here on this little meter, you can see the reduction of what is actually hitting. Right. 
And that's pretty cool. So you can actually see what is actually being reduced inside the mixer track if that's something that you want to do. You don't have to do that, but if you want to do it, you can actually do that inside of Reaper. I think that's pretty dope. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to add um, a template in here just so I can show you one more thing. So I have this boom bap kit that I have. So usually if you have a track folder and you want to collapse it, you can hit over here and you can kind of collapse the folder. But as you see, it's completely hidden now. All those tracks are hidden. I have it big, I have it small, and I have it hidden. You don't have to do that many, but you have that option now to change it. Big shout out to Reaper Tips for showing this one. Uh, so if you go to your options, you want to go to preferences and you want to be in your track control panels. So once you click on that, you'll see this option here that says uh, folder collapse button cycles track heights, right? So now if I click on this, it'll give me an option for normal, small and collapsed. You can do normal, small and hidden. You can do normal and collapsed or you could do normal and hidden. So let's say we did this one, right? I'm gonna apply it. So now I do normal and it's gonna do collapsed, right? So if you wanted to do normal hidden, apply. So I could do normal and hidden. So I can normalize the track and then hide it. Um, I don't know why, but I like the small and hidden. Normal, small and hidden, that's just my preference. Before the, the tiny one didn't really make sense to me. So uh, the normal, small and hidden make a little bit more sense to me uh, when I'm using it. So now I can go normal. I could do smaller, which I usually like to have mines in small. And then I can do hidden. So really, really dope, really, really cool. Uh, easy to kind of set up and use. All right, so one of the biggest things that was added was comping and a new way of making track lanes is what they call it and comping. Uh, big shout out to Mike for actually doing a video showing us kind of how to set it up and do it. Um, I was having a hard time on the live, just to be honest, trying to figure it out. But uh, it's kind of simple once you actually know what to do. So let's say that we have these lanes here, right? So I want to go and right click on my track. And once you do that, it gives you an option for this fixed item lane or free item positioning. So the free item positioning basically means you can have multiple things inside of one lane, right? Or in, inside the track. But we want to do this fixed item lanes. This is the one we want to use, right? So this brings up this item here. As you see, it has a one. So that means this one thing is in this lane. Uh, let's say I wanted to add something else to it. Or if I was doing vocal comping, I can just keep recording over and over and you, you'll be able to do your comping that way. But with this, it gives you an option if you are a person who likes to do, say, samples and things like that. This gives you another option to actually do sampling inside of Reaper a different way than uh, you used to doing it. So for example, uh, let's say I take I took this one, right? And you see there's a, this little dash line underneath. If I put it in here, it'll put it right underneath inside this lane. And you see it says two here. So I can switch between them going one or two, right? I can double click on it to rename it. If I want, didn't want it to be named one or two, I can rename them. Uh, if I wanted both of them to play at the same time, I could hold down control and click and it'll add the other one back on there. But let's see if we can add another one. Let's add this one too. So we have three, let's add one final one, right? All right. So now we have four samples inside here and you can always kind of mix them up and move them around. So if you want it just to move like this one, you can highlight it and kind of move it around to wherever you want to move it. If you wanted this one, you can move it around. Uh, if you wanted just to lock on this, you can kind of uh, just play this one across, or you can just play two across. You can undo that one. You could do this one and this one and leave the other one out. So it gives you this cool option 
to house many different things in this track lane. So once the track lane is created, you also have the option to right click in here. Of course, everybody should know if you right click on Reaper, you'll probably find something that you're looking for. So you right click on here and this is basically uh, the lanes options that you do have. So you can show uh, only one lane and this is uh, the reset, all the lane names. So you can reset the names. If you change the names of them, it'll go back to like one or whatever it is set on. Uh, comping is where you wanna go. So if you can comp into a new uh, empty, empty line, you can comp into a new empty line, which is making a brand new comp line. You could comp into a new empty line, automatically creating comp areas. So basically, instead of you manually doing it, it'll automatically make a whole comp area for you, right? Uh, comp into new copy of this lane. So if you, if you're whatever lane you chose, you can make a comp lane, make that into the comping lane if you want. And I like to choose this as well, allow editing source media while comping. So basically I can kind of edit whatever these uh, wave files are up there. I think that's pretty cool, all right? Here you have the option to delete lanes. You could delete all of them. You could delete what's there, only the one that's chosen, right? And you could delete uh, areas if you wanted to as well. You can always color them and you have an option for recording so you can record into uh, new lanes if you wanted to as well. But we're gonna deal with the comping. So let's go and do a new comping lane. So as you see, it says C1. If you double click on it, you can rename it if you wanted to. We're gonna leave it as C1. And now you get the option to have this little pencil tool. So this pencil tool or eraser tool, I'm not sure what it is, just to be honest, uh, gives you the option to pick out what you want to comp. So let's say I wanted just this beginning part here. Boom, and let's say we want this part here up to there, and then we want this part, right? Up to there, and let's go back up to the top and add one there. And this gives you an option to add them wherever you want to. So let's say I wanted this lick here, right? And And as you see, it has like this plus sign. This can allows you to drag it up or down inside the tracks, which is pretty cool. And you can still move them over and kind of, as you see, it'll move through the track and fade it automatically. That's pretty cool as well. So this is why they made this uh, so accessible, I believe. I think this is really cool. So uh, let's move this over. I can move this over, right? So now we just have this one piece that's missing here. And we can leave it missing if we wanted to. So if we go back to the beginning and play it. Right, so that, that's another way to kind of find some really cool ways to do stuff. If you wanted to add that last piece in there, you can kind of do it here. So boom, so we have all those in there. So if I was sampling, I'd probably do something. I don't like this one, so let's move this maybe down to this bottom. Really, really cool, innovative way to kind of think about doing comping. Uh, this can be done for vocals, as you can see, samples, guitars, drum breaks, all that stuff can be done right here inside this little comping area. I think that's really, really cool. I really like what they did with this. There's more features that they actually have. I haven't unlocked them all, <laughs> but I just wanted to make sure you guys uh, saw the proper way to kind of do it, uh, unlike the live video that I did. But with that being said, that's pretty much the end of this video. If you have like any questions or concerns, please leave them below in the comment section. Uh, make sure you guys are liking and subscribing to the channel. And I want to thank you guys for watching Learning Reaper. Till the next time. Peace. Hey, you. Yes, you. YouTube wants you to watch this video next, man. Go ahead and click it. I'll wait.
<laughs> nah, I'm just playing. I'm not going to keep waiting here. All right. I will see you in the next video, though. Peace.